Hey, everybody, it's the coach. You're tuned in to Sunday Night Football on EA Sports. Coming up next, we've got what should be a good one between the monsters of the Midway, the Chicago Bears, and the Philadelphia Eagles. With that, let's get up to the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. We're standing by for the call are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. The scene in South Philly a few moments ago. Boy, the city of brotherly love is fired up. They're saying fly, Eagles, fly, as they get ready to match up with the Chicago Bears. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis, thrilled to be with you from the broadcast booth. And partner, before we get this thing started, what are you going to be watching? Who gets off to a fast start? In horse racing terms, they talk about catching a flyer out of the gate. Who sets the pace and makes the other team chase? The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Carson Wentz bringing out the Philadelphia Eagles, and the big news for the quarterback for Philly, he's just been healthy all year. Knock on wood, you know, the injury, the ACL issues that he's had to deal with. And maybe not the numbers that he had a couple of years ago when he was an MVP candidate through 33 touchdowns to seven interceptions. But a solid enough season certainly to have the Eagles in a division battle with the Cowboys going down the stretch in the NFC East. Wentz now on first down. The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A good start offensively. 15 yards on the game's initial play. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Here's carry number one for Jordan Howard. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. From just shy of midfield, Wentz. He's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So into Bear territory now. This is first and ten at the 46. Watch the now Howard, and he'll get this down only to about the 46. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Here's the offense, and sometimes you got to show love to the big guys. That you do. We're talking about Jason Kelsey now, not Travis, his brother who plays tight end. Jason lines up at center, a threat to go to the Pro Bowl each and every year. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Shotgun now for Wentz. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And here are the Chicago defensive starters. Ha ha, Clinton Dix attracted a lot of attention when he was about to enter the NFL for his ability to play the football in the air. He's actually shown that he can tackle pretty well in the league, too. Third 
And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. From the gun, it's Wins. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. And this punt sails over the sideline. And the spot, it looks to be right at the 25-yard line. Mitchell Trubisky and the Chicago Bears offense coming up here. A lot of ups and downs for the Bears' third-year signal caller, Trubisky Charles. There was a time where the morning shows both in Chicago and nationwide were saying maybe it's going to be time to move on from Mitchell Trubisky, but kind of righted the ship a bit with a few good games in the second half. Well, he was healthy for one thing. You remember earlier in the year against Minnesota, he hurt his shoulder and had to leave the ball game. And then later in the season when they were playing, I believe, on a Sunday night against the Rams out in Los Angeles, he hurt his hip late in the game got himself healthy and they got back to where they could run the football with Mitchell Trubisky and he's at his best when quarterback run game scrambles are part of what he's doing he throws the ball better he gets better he gets a better sync with his offense I like Mitchell Trubisky a lot he cares about the game and one quote has stuck with me I had him before week 15 against Green Bay and he told me and my crew my head coach Matt Nagy no one's had my back like he has I think that those two will stay together in lockstep moving forward to 2020. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. A good run as he works his way for nine that time, and it'll leave him with a third and just a few inches. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with a draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing. Get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass him with a running play. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Football going back to the Eagles, and Charles, this Eagles team and the Cowboys, what an interesting NFC East race this turned out to be this season. A lot of people thought it would be these two teams neck and neck. Well, they were right, but they thought the records would be a touch better. But if you keep it germane to the Eagles, what has gone right, what has gone wrong this year for them? Well, what's gone right is that they have a good culture that they battle because this season could have gone totally south for Philadelphia because they had a number of injuries. They went through some losing stretches, and the whole thing could have gotten away from them, but they hung in there and battled all the way to the end. What went wrong? Receivers. By the end of the season, they were playing with guys they were bringing up from the practice squad, signing off of other teams' practice squads. None of the starters that were expected to be their frontline guys were available down the stretch for Philadelphia and their quarterback, Carson Wentz. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Wentz off the fake handoff to Howard. Got him in, complete. This is Richard Rodgers. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. A gain there of 21 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Back-to-back -to -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Wentz on the draw, leaves it for Sanders. And he's going to be stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. 
Nothing there for him. Second down. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. From midfield, here's Wentz. This short throw caught by Goddard. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Working from the gun, Wentz. And Jeffrey's got it. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 21 yards there on third down. We always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Show some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. Now a play fake. Wentz. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was trying to find Deshaun Jackson that time. That'll bring up second down. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Again, they'll throw with Wentz. He'll hit Jackson complete. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. The Eagle passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. They'll run with Sanders. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? On second and goal, Wentz to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Now we've got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that huddle, partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Here's Wentz to throw. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Leonard Floyd, the old Georgia Bulldog, fighting his way into the backfield. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. So on comes the Eagle kicker, Jake Elliott, on fourth down. The kick by Elliott is good. And the Eagles, they take a 3-0 lead. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Yeah, 
After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. As the Bears come back out here, we talked about their quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, earlier, their head coach, Matt Nagy, but bottom line, it's not going to be a second consecutive postseason appearance for this team. They just took a little bit too long to get rolling. They were a better team in the second half, but by then, both the Packers and the Vikings were well clear of them. That is so true, and look, all the issues they had on offense, Mitchell Trubisky struggling with injuries and inconsistency early. Then on the defensive side, I think it was underrated, the loss of Danny Trevathan at inside linebacker. He went out fairly early. Akeem Hicks gets hurt in London against Oakland with an elbow injury. He doesn't make it back until week 15 against Green Bay. Without Akeem Hicks in the middle, that really hurt Khalil Mack and Leonard Floyd coming off the edge because teams can now devote extra attention out to those guys since they didn't have to worry about the pass rush as much up the middle. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. And that's incomplete. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver. And it's third and short. And the defense now for the Eagles. Malcolm Jenkins entered the NFL as a cornerback and has transitioned to safety, but still retains his good coverage skills. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Davis, he'll try to run for it. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. A quick throw out wide, caught by Robinson. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. On second down, Davis. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. And it's third down. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. Off the play fake, here's Trubisky. And Robinson with a big catch. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles 35. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Now it's Trubisky. Robinson's got it. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. They'll run on second down with Cohen. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A game there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? 
Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, okay, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Trubisky gives to Cohen. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. On third down, Trubisky, and that is incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. The kick by Pinheiro is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle, right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Huh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the, just because bre you break chestnuts? I I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Field goals, all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. This is fielded at the goal line. Pretty move. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Eagles offense sent to begin their next drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Three, three, a tight one after one on EA Sports. near the 40 now after the big play to start. Here's another first and 10. Wentz now to throw. That's caught by Jackson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 14 yards there and an eagle first down. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Wentz. Completes it to Aguilar. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. A gain of six there on first.
Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. It's a second down run with Sanders. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They'll try to run for it with Howard. And Howard stops short. He didn't get there. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play. And that's going to lead them to fourth down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So they're challenging the spot. If you're a coach, you hesitate to throw the flag anytime it's a spot discernment. You certainly do, because you feel like that's not one you're likely to win, and you may need that challenge flag for later in the game. I'm sure as a coach, when you throw the flag, you hold your breath, then you get the verification you were right, a sigh of relief. Not only a sigh of relief, a little vindication as well, because every time you pull that red flag and throw it, you could be costing your team a timeout. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Wentz going to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time, and that'll bring up second down. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. It's out of time, guys. It's out of time. Now Wentz. And complete to Zach Ertz. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 24-yard line. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. On first down, Wentz. It's caught by Aguilar. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Uh, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. On third down, this is Howard. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They didn't need a big play there. They just needed a conversion, but I'm really downplaying it, aren't I? Getting a conversion, picking up a first down, not easy in any aspect. How about that one right there? Yeah, with the dive, knew where the line to gain was, went soaring past it. Yeah, that's doing it by any means necessary. They'll try to run with Sanders. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Back at the two now, here's second and goal. 
Try to punch it in with Howard. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. Wentz on the give to Sanders. And he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. He gets it halfway there with that run. I think you play up-tempo, get right back on the line of scrimmage, and hammer at him again. Howard all alone in the backfield on second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Throwing his wins. Caught by the tight end Ertz. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. They dialed up the blitz on third down, and your worry is a defense that they can hit you with a big play in that situation. Instead, the blitz pays off, able to rally to the football and make the play. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Elliott puts this one through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. to three. Well, That will go down as a 15-play drive, and it results in three points. So, some disappointment? It's funny. We had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator. And what did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick, right? An extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because it did end in a kick, but that type of a drive should end in the end zone. to the field goal. Here's Elliott to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point... The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe -bash. laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> They begin with a run by Davis. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The last run got six, now second and four. Check, 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 check. They'll run with Davis. And an alley to run. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. A couple of very nice carries to start this drive out. Yeah, two first downs. And how about that second one? What a nice run on that particular play. I'm telling you, they're going to start to think that this game is easy if they continue to rip off yardage like this. Yeah. 
First down, a run with Cohen. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. The Bears on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And that is incomplete. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe somebody to press it a little bit. This might be the case. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at the 20. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And he'll lose yardage here, back to the 15. A full five yard loss that time. It's gonna make second down pretty tough. When you lose that kind of yardage on a pass play, you often expect it to be a sack, but that wasn't the case there. They completed the pass. Probably would have been better off just dropping the football and making an incompletion as opposed to catching it and losing that kind of yardage. Second and 15 now. Wentz trying to get it to Jackson, and it's intercepted. Eddie Jackson picks it, and the return here will go to the 31-yard line. And, Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. After the interception, here's Trubisky. He's going to take a shot right away for the end zone. Back of the end zone, could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. The strong windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Draw play here, Trubisky gives to Cohen. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. 
Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Yeah. So they've been unable to capitalize on the great field position as of yet. Here's third and nine. Now Trubisky to throw. The screen pass here to Cohen. And this defense rallies, and they stop him short of the first down, right near the 24. Five yards on the screen, but that'll take us to fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. He connected on his first, this from 41. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And that will tie things up at 6-6. Six -six. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces him to settle for three. And it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. It's what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. So back even at six apiece as the kick's away. This is taken at his four. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Carson Wentz and the Eagles make their way out to the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 26. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. And he will make his way back to where he started from, and that's all, as we will make our way to the two-minute warning. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. Need to give the, need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. First down Hang now, but now. that clock rolling. 59, 59. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Wentz now on first down. This complete left side to Aguilar. A gain of six there on first. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Throwing now is Wentz, and he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. The catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. On the draw, here's Sanders. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. But forget knowing where the first down line was. 
This defense created their own line of scrimmage. They won every battle up front, and a lot of times that is one-on-one. -on -one. And if you win your one-on-ones enough times, your defense is going to be pretty good. They had more people to the football than snuffed out the play. Kick by Elliott is good. And they take the lead here as it's now 9-6. to six. And that right there is something we've seen, oh, I don't know, 15 times in NFL history. That will officially go down as a 60-yard field goal. And everything has to be absolutely perfect for this to have any chance. He's got to get it out low and really drive through it. And I tell you, that was one heck of a kick. One heck of a decision on the sideline to even try it as well. To the field goal. Here's Elliott to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. He'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24 yard line. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one. Go to the locker room. Start over. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Throwing here, Trubisky. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And now they'll take a timeout defensively. After the second down play, they burn the timeout, making him sweat out the final few ticks here in the second quarter. After that sack we just saw, Trubisky and the Bears deal with a third and long. He'll take the knee in the final couple seconds. will tick by in this first half. And they're going to take a timeout defensively. So with fourth down coming up, they go ahead and burn it and say we'll see what happens. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for Chicago. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. This is fielded at the 27. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams as they've already made their way back out of the locker room. So to bring you the story of the second half, let's get you right back out to Brandon Godden. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. Back. 
So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at the 40. Here's Davis now. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. I'm getting the sense that Fletcher Cox is making offensive linemen want to take the week off when they have to play against him. <laughs> it's a regular routine for him, isn't it? It really is. That play there, that's him all day long. Good luck trying to block him and keep him from disrupting your offense. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Now with shotgun handoff to Cohen. A good pickup there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. Now we'll get a stoppage here as it appears we've got an eagle slow to get up. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. On third down, Davis, and he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now it's Davis. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. But you know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. Yeah, every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. From the gun on third down, it's Trubisky. This one into the hands of Burton. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Trubisky finding the former Eagle Burton for the Chicago first. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll try to counter here, Cohen. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Give the tackle that time to Rodney McLeod. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Hey, pick it up, defense. Let's go. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Davis. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half. Things haven't worked so well in the first go-around. They want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it, and they've run it well here to start the second half. They keep it with Davis on first down. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. 
When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now they'll throw it with Trubisky. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. So nothing there on the screen that time. That means all that great acting they tried on offense went for naught, didn't it? Because you have to try and influence them. Make them think that you're doing something else. Make them think that they can get to the passer by letting them by and then setting up the screen and getting downfield. Didn't happen at all. Give a lot of credit to the defense for not tumbling to that one. Now they go screen. It's complete. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Might we see our first touchdown of the game? Here's first and goal. Here's Trubisky. He's got Burton here. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bears have retaken the lead. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point. And he bangs this one through to make it a 13-9 game now. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here at half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. They start on the ground here at Sanders. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. A lot of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Let's go, team. Big series right here. We got to step it up. A quick pass out to Aguilar. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way, lost yardage. 
No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you <laughs> move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. On second down now, it's Sanders. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. The well, touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. Here's Cameron Johnston now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 right at the 30. From the gun, it's Trubisky. Connecting with Burton here over the middle. And getting this just shy of midfield. They'll spot it at the 49. First play of the drive, a success. 19 yards. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. This is Davis. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second and nine, Trubisky. Robinson's got it. Takes this to the 45. Broken tackle. Bought him a little extra space. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Out of the gun, Trubisky. Finding Gabriel complete. And he has another first down as they'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 27-yard line. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered. But how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. Trubisky now 11 of 17 passing thus far. He's got his guys a first and 10. Now it's Trubisky. Completes it to Miller. That throw good for four. It's second down. 
I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Out of the gun, running with Cohen. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Stab carry for Davis and a short pickup there down to about the nine. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. You better be ready. Don't be scared. On second down, it's Cohen. And he's going to battle his way down right around the two-yard line. Eight yards on the run there, and that leaves him with third and just a couple. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. So that'll back him up five. Still third down. Not ideal there. That delay of game backs him up five yards, so now they need seven yards on third down. Here's Trubisky to throw, and that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. Tariq Cohen there to make the grab as the Bears push further out in front. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. That time, a nine-play drive, and it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, there's some guys, there's going to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. And now a throw on 
first down there, but it's incomplete. CD, with that incompletion, let's talk AFC playoff picture. I think you and I agree that if you put together any sort of power rankings, we'd put Baltimore number one, certainly in the AFC. But you look ahead to the playoffs getting started on January 4th. Who do you see as their main competitor for that Lamar Hunt trophy? Well, tradition and us not wanting to be wrong dictates that we say New England next, and rightly so because of the number of Lombardi trophies they've won, how they've always played at this time of year. But the bottom line to me is the prime contenders right now for Baltimore, Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes has got it together and the defense is playing better. And Buffalo really showed me something when they beat Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh on a Sunday night in week 15. On third down, Howard. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Let's go, One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Working from the gun, Wentz. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. I want to go back to something you said in the first quarter. Is, about it, winning. is, is it a positive? It is a positive. Okay. About winning the turnover battle. As a visiting <laughs> team, as an underdog, you were right. They've done just that, and look where it's gotten them. It's part of the formula. When you go on the road, as you mentioned, being an underdog, winning the turnover battle is a big key, and this one's playing out in this one. Throwing again on second and ten. Wentz completes it to Aguilar. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Twelve yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Wentz now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Wentz now to throw. Ertz has it left side. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 17 yards and a first down for Philly. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes. So difficult to cover. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 34. Again, it's Wentz. Ertz over the middle. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A big pick up there for the Eagles first down, 18 yards. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. On first down, they run with Howard. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Throwing his wins. The Sanders has got it complete. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that'll make it third and one. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack 
is a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. The Eagles on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Wentz. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by Kyle Fuller. And he will take it on out to the 20-yard line. Well, you're trailing. It's the fourth quarter, and you've got to throw the football. But the defense knows this, too. So they're just going to sit back, bring in an extra defensive back or two, the old nickel or dime strategy, Brandon, and wait for you to put that bad boy up for grabs. And this one winds up being intercepted. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. After the interception, here's Trubisky. That one brought in by his tight end, Adam Shaheen. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 16 yards is the pickup there and a first down for Chicago. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now Trubisky to throw. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. Well, that was man coverage. So once he decides to run with the football, there's no one to account for him, and he turns it into a nice gain. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Open man, Taylor Gabriel. And he's got this down to the 35. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. They'll throw on first down with Trubisky. And an alley to run. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's taken down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? On second down now. It's Davis. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to her back. From the gun on third down, it's Trubisky. This one into the hands of Burton. 
And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But they still ate up time, got points. So... While it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. And they had a nice little drive going last time through the interception in the red zone, costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about, hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 24. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Ten yards there and an eagle first down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. <laughs> no doubt. Here's Wentz to throw. He'll hit Jackson complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 23 yards on the play. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. But they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Shotgun now for Wentz. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. And down to the 29-yard line. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Philadelphia. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. That throw good for four. It's second down. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Now Wentz again. And that'll be incomplete. There defensively was Buster screen to knock it away. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. Because they have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. The Eagles on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This will be third and six. And down he goes. 
was a coverage sack. Took too long Second to get rid eight. of it. Akeem Hicks at 6'5", 332, finds his way home for the sack. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Throwing now is Wentz. Aguilar has it. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Wentz is going to lead his guys up first and ten, and he's five for six now throwing the ball on this drive. Now wins. It's complete. It's Miller. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard, your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defender. Got him in. Open, it hurts. Touchdown, Philadelphia. You got it. A seven-yard touchdown grab as his guys are back within a single score. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, uh, yeah. yeah, you know. It doesn't kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Elliott good with a PAT. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. And this offense, led by Mitchell Trubisky, going to make their way back out there. And those numbers, they kind of tell the story of his game so far. Started off not so hot now. He's really heated up. And remember, he signed up for duty as the guy who leads the team, right? The field general, the signal caller. So when things go rocky early, he can't just exit out and ask someone else to pick things up. He's got to do it himself, and that's what he's done here in this game. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 21. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. We've got a one-score game with inside of two minutes remaining. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They'll run it again here with Davis. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. 
Well, they got the yardage they needed there. Picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have, as well as to understand where they are in the field? Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. A quick throw out wide caught by Robinson. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. Now Cohen. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. this only to the 41 not near enough for the first it's a seven yard run but it does bring up fourth down that was a good run probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big so the defensive guys right now are talking about okay what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started Here's Pat O'Donnell now. He's been terrific so far. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Eagles will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and 10. So now Wentz and the Eagles down by seven a little under a minute to go needing to go pretty much the length of the football field as they have it first and ten back to throw wins throwing for his running back and he's got him complete I call it no game there on the first down play. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. The Eagles hustling to the line, clock rolling. Back to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape all over the passing lane? Yes, that's exactly what you do. It's both because they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. If you have a big-time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. We got four. We got four. Wentz going to go on fourth down. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. The sack there by Roquan Smith. So that one hurt. No timeouts left. Look at where the ball is on the field, Charles. I, I don't know if the fat lady's singing yet, but she's starting to hum a little bit, isn't she? You think she's doing scales at this point? I don't think there's any doubt about it, but they had to go for it. In this situation, with their timeout situation as well, they had to take the chance, try and get it done. They didn't. Now they're powerless to stop them, essentially. They need a big play somehow from their defense. 
Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. And Trubisky down to a knee, and that is all she wrote. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And I tell you, this was a fun one. Just a close game. Nothing comes easy in this league, as you know. They had to work for that victory. I've got to go back to what you just said. Nothing comes easy in this league. How many times have we talked to coaches prior to a game and assessed, you know, the strengths, the weaknesses, the whole deal? Even in games when one coach was a decided favorite, what do they always say to us? But you do know, this is really a seven-point league. Seven points either way usually decides a ball game. We had exactly that in this one. And not only that, but this is a gutsy road victory, one they can hang their hat on. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. From Philadelphia, good night, everybody.